wake up with all kinds of tumors and wonder how they came. Biochemist Otto Warburg is a scientist who discovered cancer in 1931, but this Nobel laureate in medicine has made a much more important discovery – the cause of cancer. Cancerous tissues are acidic, while healthy tissues are alkaline, said Dr. Warburg decades ago. No disease can develop in an alkaline environment. According to this great biologist, the main cause of cancer is excessive acidity or oxygen deficiency, which creates in the body an acidic environment favorable for the development of diseases. In recent years, more and more nutritionists and doctors have started talking about the importance of alkalizing the body in the prevention of cancer and other chronic diseases. Normal cells need oxygen, but cancer cells can live without oxygen. Cancer cells are anaerobic, meaning they do not breathe oxygen, so they cannot survive in the presence of high levels of oxygen, as happens in an alkaline state. Dr. Warburg was convinced that there is an important link between pH and oxygen. A high pH means a higher concentration of oxygen molecules, which creates an alkaline environment conductive to maintaining healthy cells, while a low pH means less oxygen and an acidic environment. The normal pH of the body is at the level of 7.3. When this level drops, the body enters an acidic state. Dr. Warburg investigated tumor metabolism and cell respiration and found that cancer cells maintain and survive at a lower pH of about 6.0. He demonstrated in his work The Metabolism of Tumors that all forms of cancer have two common features – acidosis and hypoxia, or lack of oxygen. A person suffering from acidosis necessarily has an oxygen deficiency and vice versa. Foods of vegetable origin induce basicity, alkalinity in the body, while meat, dairy products, white bread, white sugar, salt and all processed cereals, concentrated sweets, alcohol, pickles, unripe fruit, vinegar and other sour foods produce acidity. The most dangerous would be dairy products, which contain casein. This substance is considered the most acidifying. See here the list of foods that form acidity and alkalizing. Life on Earth depends on an optimum pH inside and around living organisms and cells. In order to survive, the human body needs a strictly controlled serum pH of about 7.4, between 7.35 and 7.45. By increasing the pH, we can protect ourselves not only from cancer, but also from viruses, bacteria, fungi, 
and degenerative diseases. When our pH level is always below 7.4, the body's systems become acidic. They force the body to extract the essential vitamins and minerals from organs, bones and teeth to neutralize the effects of acidosis. Acidosis weakens the body's systems and creates the perfect environment for serious diseases such as cancer, diabetes, obesity, osteoporosis, arthritis, premature aging. A pH level between 4.5 to 6.0 shows a severe acidosis favorable for degenerative diseases. Between 6.0 and 6.5 means moderate acidosis. 7.0 to 7.5 means an optimal pH of health. Not too much alkalinity is good. 7.5 to 9.0 already means an unhealthy alkalosis. During the last 100 years, industrialization has led to a decrease in the pH of the ocean and soil, and this has affected the mineral content, which helps maintain an alkaline pH in the foods we consume. Acidic soils below 6 have a low calcium and magnesium content. At the same time, there was a decrease in the level of potassium compared to the level of sodium and an increase in the level of chlorine compared to the level of bicarbonate in the modern diet. Compared to the pre-agricultural period, today's diet is much poorer in magnesium, potassium and fiber and is richer in saturated fats, simple sugars, sodium and chlorine. It is a cause of metabolic acidosis. The results of several studies indicate that an alkaline diet can help reduce morbidity and mortality due to chronic diseases affecting the population of today's society. Consumption of alkaline fruits and vegetables improves the relationship between potassium and sodium and implicitly bone health, reduces muscle loss and the risk of chronic diseases, hypertension and stroke, improves cardiovascular and mental health, memory and cognition, increase of intracellular magnesium through alkaline foods helps the functioning of numerous enzyme systems and increase the efficiency of some chemotherapeutic drugs. Studies at the University of Bari, Italy have shown that tumors, regardless of their origin or location, have a common feature – the acid environment. An acidic pH or low oxygen level increases tumor progression. Japanese researchers found that low urine pH 5.0 to 5.5 increases the risk of chronic kidney disease and metabolic syndrome. The best time when we can measure our pH is in the morning upon waking. You can test your saliva and urine. In this regard, you can use special bands to test the pH level. That's what they call themselves. In the morning, before brushing your teeth and drinking water, spit in a teaspoon and immerse the tape in saliva. Wait 15 seconds and compare the resulting color with the colors on the test scale on the back of the box. You will thus find out what your pH value is. For urine testing, use the first and second urine after waking up. Immerse the test strip in the urine, sink and remove the tape quickly without holding it too long. Shake it and wait 15 seconds. Compare the color obtained with the colors on the box and read the pH value, averaging the two urine tested. Take this test several days in a row. Stress plays a very unfortunate role. Stress is the reaction that the body has to a trauma that can be physical, mental, emotional. Stress in the body has an effect on three essential structural elements – the neuron, the DNA, the genetic substrate of the body and the immune system. Above the immune system, stress anger. Anger for 5 minutes can block cells of the immune system for up to 5 to 6 hours. The immune system is that system of cells and organs that produce lymphocytes. They protect us from viruses, bacteria and do their duty constantly circulating in the body. For example, dying cells must be removed. And in the body there are killer or killer lymphoid cells, which include these dying cells, because otherwise they can attach to a place, it creates inflammation and from here we can wake up with all kinds of diseases, including cancer. 
Therefore, these cells, called medically NK, are extremely useful. They must constantly circulate in the body to be able to defend us against all those substances that are foreign to the body. Stress disturbs their efficiency. Technology has offered us many advantages, but at the same time it has exceeded our biological rate of adaptation. Take a look at what's happening in the media too. All the news you only follow is bad news. All this affects us. Beyond that, there are in the lives of all the people living in this world suffering and suffering troubles. There are a lot of problems that we face daily. Of course, it is essential not to get involved. Emotional involvement in a negative phenomenon, in a television, news story, etc., it consumes a lot of energy. You have to defend yourself by trying to detach, that means self-education, to know something about stress defense techniques, and of course, to avoid it. You have to try to be as indifferent as possible, to put up a dam. It's one of the defense techniques. Of course, you cannot completely avoid stress, because we live in a world where we want, we don't want, we also have stress. Every one of us is sick, someone dies, these are stresses that are inevitable, they are part of our biology. Obviously, these are situations where you cannot remain indifferent. Someone dies, you can't laugh, it's abnormal. These are things that are about the naturalness of things, not what we're talking about. But I'm talking about the other cases, especially the stress that comes from tracking down negative news, for example. I think society should manage stress and there are many ways. I believe very strongly the condition is that the people who lead us have some notions of social psychology, so now they must have notions of economic philosophy. But what can we do concretely? Each one of us must make the effort to change first and foremost not to stress the one next to him, because the moment I stress the other, I implicitly stress myself. This change must begin with each of us. So we need a stress management at the social level but also at the individual level and when we do all these things we can talk about health and a harmonious existence.